Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up for 2020. This is the last wrap up of the year. Um, I'm doing this a little bit later than I normally do. It's actually January already, but um, I wanted to quickly go through the six things that I, I read in uh, December. Most of them were rereads um, and they were all digital so I don't really have anything to show you here today um, and I've talked about a lot of these things before so this should go pretty quickly. Um, I started off the month by reading the first three books, first three books? The entire trilogy of the Charm of Magpies series by KJ Charles. They are The Flight of Magpies, nope that's backwards, they are The Lord of Magpies, Case of Possession and Flight of Magpies, I believe. And I always get the titles mixed up because I don't, I reread these on Kindle, so I never see the covers. Um, but I will try to remember to put, maybe put them in here. Um, but this is a series uh, about some dark magic. Um, basically, Lord Crane is a man who was exiled by his wealthy father to China and he has spent the last 20 years there living um, and smuggling and being a traitor and living without um, any thought to his family in England. But when his father and brother die suddenly, um, he inherits the family estate. And he goes back to England in order to kind of settle his affairs and hopefully go back to China where he feels much um, more accepted. Um, because he is gay and that's not accepted in England at the time. So he uh, is dealing with this but then something happens where some dark magic starts to affect him and he and his uh, manservant decide to try and enlist the help of a English magic worker because when they lived in China that's what they would have done. They would have enlisted the work of a uh, native uh, magic worker. So they try to find one in England. Who they find is Stephen, who is a magister, and he um, is familiar with Crane's family and has had run-ins with Crane's family. So he and Crane have some antagonism and old um, hurts to work through there. Um, but it is essentially a story of solving Crane's problem as well as uh, some romance uh, and uh, pretty steamy romance between the two of them. I love this series. Um, the series really changes over time, like it's about different things each book, like there's, it's kind of each, in each book they are um, tackling a different mystery, a different problem, but the characters stay the same and I really enjoyed this reread. I don't think I've reread the final book in the series um, before now so that it was kind of like reading it for the first time because I hadn't read it in at least two or three years um, and so I really enjoyed that. I love the characters, I love the story, I reread these books a lot especially the first one because I, this was my third reread of the year um, because I just fly through that first book and eat it up. I will say though there are some, I would say there's very strong trigger warnings for suicidal thoughts and suicidal suicide attempts in that first book. Um, it's pretty intense there in the, in the beginning, but um, other things, we move past that eventually, but it is there and it's, it's like I said, it's pretty intense. Then I want to talk about Diosil, I think is how you would say it. Diosil, I'm not, um, not 100% sure. It's the 11th and final book in the Why Born and Griffin series. I ate this series up in 2020 and absolutely loved it. Um, and reading this final book was really, really exciting. Um, in this series, we follow Wyborn and Griffin, who are uh, two characters. Wyborn is a museum worker and a linguist, and he translates ancient texts, while Griffin is a uh, former Pinkerton and someone who is investigating a death in the small town where Wyborn lives, and the two of them begin working with one another. And there is a lot going on in this series. Like the first initial book is just them trying to solve this murder and figure out if the other one is interested in them. 11 books down the line, we have developed the world and the characters a lot. And I don't think I really realized that until I was reading the 11th book. And like, I, I did realize it because I would talk about it and mention it, but I read the first eight or so books in August and then um, picked up like about a book a month since then, just because I've had a hard time reading. And finally picking up this 11th book after about a month of the, the other book that I, the 10th book, 
it really made me realize how much time has passed for these characters as well as how much they have grown and changed and how much Hawk's writing has improved since the first book. I mean, um, I don't want to get into spoily spoilery territory or anything like that, but um, in the first book, obviously, like I said, we are trying to figure out if Wyborn, Wyborn and Griffin are like dancing around one another and figuring out if they are interested in one another. And they have this like, it's like they are this passionate relationship right at the beginning. But as time goes on, they grow and change like any couple would. Uh, and by the 11th book, they are, you know, very in tune to one another and very, um, comfortable with one another like well beyond what they you know all of and I just didn't it didn't even hit me until I was in the 11th book and I was reading a, a particular passage and I was like a lot of time has passed here these characters have uh literally aged and changed and grown and we have traveled the world with them and it was just I don't know it just really struck me in this last book how much um Hawk put into their development and and um, the timeline and all of that. The first book was, I read these books in four months, but the initial book was published in like 2012. And then, you know, the last book just came out last year. So it's been a journey of years for Hawk and the readers as well. I'm, I'm on the tail end of that. I just gobbled these all up, but um, it just really made me realize how much things had changed across the course of the books by taking that little bit of a break and I, I'm kind of thankful for my reading slump in a way that I ended up uh, taking time to uh, read this a little bit later than I would have and not just gobbling it uh, down uh, in like October and not having that realization or that appreciation for the story. So anyway after that I read uh, the prequel story to Why Born and Griffin, which was a short little novella style story called Rescued. It's basically about how Griffin finds his cat. And it's super cute and fun. And it was a nice little like finisher after I finished the final book, just to kind of have one last like little bit of with those characters and kind of like separate myself from the ending a bit. So I enjoyed that. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is Think of England by K.J. Charles. This is another reread for me. And basically we are at a manor house in the English countryside in the 1920s. And our main character, whose name I cannot remember, uh, is going there because he is a former soldier who was injured when a set of defective weapons was um, given to his unit. And he um, lost several friends and he has been maimed um, pretty severely by this, uh, this defective weapon mishap and they are trying to figure out if this was intentional or, uh, I think they know it's intentional. I think they're trying to figure out who did it, like if, if it was this person or if someone else sold the weapons and all of that. Um, I am forgetting the finer points of the story at this point, even though I've reread this several times. <laughs> um, but like I said, there's espionage and subterfuge and, um, there's spying and romance and, uh, discovery and English, uh, English manners and all of that. It's very fun. I really enjoy this. I like the, the, the plot of trying to figure out who done it and kind of figuring out this military mystery. Um, but overall, it's just another story that I reread when I'm in a reading slump and I need something to pull me out of it, just like Flight of Magpies. Nope, Lord of Magpies. <laughs> I'm never gonna get those right now. Um, but yeah, that was the last thing I read and I really enjoyed that reread again. Um, but that is it for me today and for 2020 and all of the wrap ups for 2020. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see me again, please hit that subscribe button down below and I will continue to see you in this fresh new year. Happy new year, everyone. Bye.